hari ini adalah hari graduation untuk uh, penamatan tahun 2022. Dan pagi hari ini semua sudah hadir pukul 8.30 pagi waktu uh, Michigan, Amerika. Sekarang kita masuk dulu ya, ada tiket. Members of the faculty, parents, grandparents, family and friends, distinguished guests, and of course our graduates. It's a genuine pleasure for me to welcome you to our spring commencement service, our Mother's Day commencement service for the College of Education and International Services and the College of Professions. This morning we will celebrate the accomplishments of our graduates. They've worked hard, they've completed their respective curricula of study, and today we will confer upon them their degrees and convey to them our very best wishes. We also have with us 18 graduates from 2020 or spring 2021 who were not able to participate in a full graduation service due to the pandemic. Uh, since they have already received their diplomas, they will instead be given a small gift to recognize their resilience and achievement before they cross the platform. And we are very delighted to welcome them and their families back to campus for this full celebration. During graduation time, in addition to recognizing our graduates, we also are going to move towards giving the diplomas. And just, just one note, a reminder that we do have official photographers. We have an official photographer at the front here. So uh, please try to avoid uh, flash photography or anything that's going to get in the way of that official photograph. And this university continues to exercise caution because of COVID-19. At this ceremony, we have some protocols in place. We want our graduates to please adhere to those. In the past, we would have given you your diplomas on stage. Today, we ask you to pick the diplomas up, the diploma covers up, off stage, and come onto the stage with that cover. Also, in the past, we would have given a handshake from the president. Today, we invite you to have some fun, not too much fun. <laughs> Choose a popular gesture, and I promise you the president will return your gesture kind. Maybe. <laughs> the, options, the options for the gestures are on the screen. Take a look at it. Was the grad school began, and he was a very important message for the graduating class of 2022. We're graduating, ready, let's go! You said I'm so excited. So, I'm here to talk to you guys about the graduation ceremony. So, we do not want to infect our dear and beloved President Luxon with COVID or whatever else we picked up during final week. And so, here are some lovely gestures that you can do instead of the peace sign. Thumbs up. <laughs> Air high five. Air fist bump. Hey. East Coast wave. <laughs> Hand on heart. The dab. Yeah. Hit the folks. Yeah. And Millie Rock. Yeah. Off that stage. <laughs> so remember these, do any one of them, or a combination of them, whatever you want to do, but just want to touch up with it. Congratulations, guys. Happy graduation.
is my great pleasure to introduce our speaker for the day. Our speaker for the day is one of our eminent professors uh, who began teaching at Andrews University in 1997. Before that time, he served for 20 years as professor, department chair, and faculty dean at Caribbean Union College, now University of the Southern Caribbean. His own studies were at Atlantic Union College, Andrews University, Loma Linda University, and the George Washington University. Dr. Gabriel retired full-time employment in 2021, but you wouldn't think so if you talked to him. He is currently Professor Emeritus of Educational Psychology and Counseling at Andrews University. Where he still functions as the coordinator of the Andrews University's PhD extension programs in educational and school psychology at the University of the Southern Caribbean. I see how we have some Southern Caribbean uh, USC supporters in our bands here today. Uh, he and his wife, Cressida, a retired elementary and Title I teacher, have lived in. Thank you, Dr. Larson, for that. Gracious introduction. Board of Trustees, President Dr. Andrea Luxton, Provost Dr. Kristen Arthur, Vice Presidents, School and College Deans, Program Directors, Faculty and Staff, Family and Friends of the Graduates. And of course, this incredible graduating class of 2022, representing the College of Education and International Services and the College of Professions. It is a distinct honor to address you on this auspicious occasion. Congratulations, class of 2022, on a job well done. Some of you are now leaving Andrews to pursue a career or to continue your academic pursuits. Uh, others will remain at Andrews to further their studies. I need to remind those of you who are planning to leave these hallowed walls in the next few days or weeks that you can check out at any time, but you can never leave. <laughs> Why? Because you are Andrews, and Andrews is you. Your sentiments, Dr. Luxton, which we have all embraced. How can you heal yourself? The indelible stamp of this noble institution will be with you in your going out, in your coming in, in your sleeping, and in your waking in your work and in your leisure, in your eating and your drinking. As you face the future, be confident that the faith-based holistic training at Andrews has provided you with the essential pillars of success, the first of which is knowledge. Knowledge which is affirmed on Christian faith how did you acquire it? You first had to assimilate information based on laws, principles, theories, models, and formulas from your coursework. Then you transform this information into knowledge through the critical thinking processes of accommodation, adaptation, application, analysis, synthesis, and evaluation. It is unfortunate that there are individuals who have graduated from colleges and universities with much information but very little knowledge. It was Rutherford D. Rogers, a Yale University librarian, who said we are drowning in information and starving for knowledge. Information without knowledge leads to mediocrity. The Cambridge Dictionary defines mediocrity as not being good at something or not being good at anything. I refer to this term as striving to be average or below average in one's pursuits. 
Be careful of this plague. When it comes knocking on the corridors of your mind, do not let it in. Because if it enters, it will be very difficult to get it out. You need to remember at times that it masquerades as excellence. Knowledge provides you with the essential tools for today and tomorrow. For knowledge to be effective, it has to be applied. Author Norman Justice said, you can swim all day in a sea of knowledge and still come out completely dry. Knowledge, which is the application of facts and principles and skills, leads to, uh, to wisdom, which is comprised of knowledge, experience, and good judgment. Miles Kington simplifies it in this way. Knowledge is knowing that a tomato is a fruit. Wisdom is not putting it in a fruit salad. <laughs> Experience and good judgment are essential tools needed to make life decisions such as a correct choice. You were able to use some judgment and experience to determine which career was best suited to your talents, skills, and interests. Before deciding on a program of study, you had a good sense of the coursework requirements, hours of preparation, and the skills and competencies required. You did not choose a program solely based on the opportunity to get a good salary or to achieve fame or public recognition. You had a good sense of the effort required to achieve the goal. This is evidence of wisdom acquisition. I will use the following illustration to bring more clarity to this issue. Seven-year-old Ben accompanied his dad to a celebration for a missionary who had recently returned from the mission field. It was a grand occasion. The tributes, the gifts, the music, the great food. Ben was impressed. The attendees listened attentively as the missionary shared the agony and ecstasy of mission work. It was a memorable event. And of course, Ben enjoyed every moment of it. On the drive home, Ben said, Dad, I know what I want to be when I grow up. I want to be a returning missionary. <laughs> this type of pre-operational and pre-logical reasoning is characteristic of children at this age but should not characterize the reasoning of adults who are making correct choices based on their program of study. Class of 2022, you have an opportunity to help those who are contemplating career options. The second pillar of success is courage, which the Merriam-Webster dictionary defines as firmness of mind or will in the face of danger or extreme difficulty class of 2022. In order to face the future with confidence, you need to demonstrate the courage to overcome the enemy within you. If this is not accomplished, you become vulnerable to the enemies outside of you. There's an African proverb that says, when there is no enemy within, the enemy outside can do no harm. Arthur Cornelius Lindsay said, if you don't make people's opinion the source of your joy, their opinions can never be a source of your pain. The enemy within is a master of negative self-talk, which leads to behaviors and thoughts which are self-defeating. For example, I'm not good enough. I am not intelligent enough. I will never be able to accomplish great things. I do not deserve to be happy. Bad things always happen to me. When I try to think positively, things fall apart. Everywhere I go, trouble follows me. Responding to these negative and destructive thoughts will hinder you from achieving the purpose that God has for you. Remember that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. When you enter into a personal relationship with God, He will renew your mind through His power. Class of 2022, you must demonstrate the courage to speak out about things that matter. 
being good and silent about things that matter may result in human cruelty, barbarity, or their lack of compassion for others. Martin Niemöller, a German theologian and Lutheran pastor, believed that Germans had been complicit through their silence in the Nazi imprisonment, persecution, and murder of millions of Jews. He felt this to be especially true of the leaders of Protestant churches, including himself. He orally admitted his apathetic posture and personal guilt and penned the following verses. First, they came for the socialists, and I did not speak out because I was not a socialist. Then they came for the trade unionists, and I did not speak out because I was not a trade unionist. Then they came for the Jews, and I did not speak out because I was not a Jew. Then they came for me, and there was no one left to speak for me. Nimala later became one of the initiators of the Stuttgart Declaration of Guilt, signed by the leading figures in German Protestant churches. The document acknowledged that the church had not done enough to resist the Nazis. Bruno Jaziansky, a 20th century Polish poet and novelist, expressed a similar sentiment. He said, do not fear your enemies. The worst they can do is kill you. Do not fear your friends. The worst they can do is to betray you. But fear those who do not kill nor betray. But betrayal and murder exist because of their silence. American civil rights activist, the late Martin Luther King Jr. reflected that, in the end, we will remember not the words of our enemies, but the silence of our friends. <laughs> Class of 2022, you're about to re-enter the world which has become more challenging than when you started your journey here at Andrews University. There are global issues with which to contend, such as economic inequality, misinformation, disinformation, and propaganda. Terrorism, genocide, unjust wars, human rights abuses, climate change, gender inequality, racism, religious intolerance, poverty. You possess, class of 2022, the credentials to deal with these myriad problems. You must be prepared to risk yourselves emotionally and physically in order to bring about the changes needed in a world that's crying out for peace. Any attempt to avoid these problems is problematic. This is a clarion call for public service and civic engagement. This is not a time to be continuously tiptoeing through the tulips of life. Find at least one global issue for which you can live and for which you can die. The door to life and its challenges is open. Step out with courage because you have embraced knowledge and faith. It is not going to be easy. There are dangers on every hand. And at times you will experience fear. But remember the words of Carl Wilson Baker. Courage is not the absence of fear. Courage is fear that has said its prayers. And finally, class of 2022, may God enlighten your mind with truth, inflame your heart with love, inspire you with courage, and enrich your life with service. Once again, congratulations on a job well done. We celebrate your accomplishments, class of 2022. Andrews University is yours. Cherish it. The world is yours. Change it.
candidates from the College of Professions. First, candidates for undergraduate degrees. Noah James Allen, magna cum laude. and sacred moment for each one of the graduates, their loved ones, and the faculty and staff of Andrews University. You have made it all possible, and we recognize this as we celebrate their achievement and their completion of their academic degrees. From today forward, their journeys are to be as varied as the ones that brought them here. And now they embark on those journeys transformed by the mission and educational purpose of your school, Andrews University, to seek knowledge, affirm faith, and change the world. May they do so with the many skills, knowledge, and dispositions they acquired throughout their lives and their experience at Andrews University, but most of all, that in every step of the way, they may always default to kindness, compassion, justice, and love as they encounter the people they are meant to serve. May your life and protection tightly surround them, their loved ones, and our continued work at this, your institution. In the name of Jesus, I pray, amen. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. This is my mom, this is my dad.